So about a year ago, I released an in-depth tutorial on how to use Arselenium. But one of the things I did not touch on is how to install it, meaning how to set it up, how to install the Java, set up the Java, installing the package, and then making sure that you set it up in a way that it will continuously work. So in this video, I want to walk you through the A to Z of how to set up Arselenium. Just as a disclaimer, I am using a Windows for this tutorial. However, uh, the same steps should apply for a Mac user as well, with of course a few changes as we go through it. Okay, so in order to run Arselenium, you do need to have Java installed, um, also known as the Java Development Kit, JDK. So we're gonna go ahead and download that right now. So you can download this directly from Oracle. However, I'm going to download a different version called the Azul uh, JDK. And the reason why I'm using this different one is because this one works better with some other packages in R, such as Tabulizer. So with Tabulizer, the Oracle version of Java doesn't really work with this. However, for the Azul JDK, you can download a much previous version of the Java development kit so that it works well with it. Um, but in this case, regardless of whether you use the Oracle JDK or the Azul JDK, it should work uh, just fine by following these steps. So I'm going to download the Azul Java. So I'm going to go into the download Azul JDKs and I'll be sure to leave this uh, URL in the description. Next, what you want to do is you want to click on the free version. So if you go to the Zulu panel over here and then click on download now. Uh, then for the Java version, you want to make sure that you select um, it doesn't matter which version you select, it's going to work on our Selenium. However, I'm going to download Java 8 uh, just because I know this one also works with the Tabulizer package um, as well. So it doesn't really matter which version you download here, it's going to work all just fine um, with our Selenium. Next, you want to select your operating system. Now, in my case, it's a Windows, but if you have a Mac, just make sure to click uh, Mac OS. And then for the architecture, it's a 64 bit. And then there we go, we have it over here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to download the zip uh, file version of this. And I'm going to give it a few seconds for it to load and download. Um, so what I'll do in the meantime is I'll open the fire file explorer, go into the PC, and then go into program files. And I will create a new folder in here. And I will call it Azul Java. And this is where I'm going to extract the contents to. So if I go to my downloads, now we have our uh, Azul Java downloaded. So I'm going to right click and then click on extract all. And then I'm going to browse to the location. So in this case, I will go into the, this PC and then I will navigate to program files. And wherever the Azul Java folder is, I will extract it over there. So I'm gonna select that folder and then I'm going to click on extract and we're gonna click on continue and then just give it a few seconds for it to extract all the contents into that folder. Okay, so now we have it all downloaded. So we have a folder in here called uh, Zool Java, uh, and then we have all the contents in here. So for simplicity's sake, I will go ahead and rename this to JDK. Click on continue. Okay, so now we have Java installed, so that is great. So one of the things that we need to do is just open up the JDK folder and open up the bin and then just take this address and copy it. And now what we're going to do is we're going to map this into the variables um, in the computer. Now just before we do that, I want to make sure that Java is not already installed on my computer. So I'll go into command prompt and type in Java dash version. And it tells me that Java is not recognized, which means that Java is not installed on the computer. So I'm going to go into my settings. And then in the search button, I will type in environment. And then I'm going to click on the edit the system environment variables. Then I'm going to click on the environment variables. And then right here in the bottom where it says path, I'm going to click on the path and click on edit. And right in the final box over here, I'm going to double click. And then I'm going to paste that uh, path that I already had copied. So I'm going to click on OK. Next, what we want to do is we want to create a new system variable. So I'm going to do that by clicking on new and I'm going to call this Java underscore home and I'm going to paste in that path. But the only difference here is I will remove the bin portion of it. Click on OK and then click on OK and then click on OK over here and we can close out of the settings. And now we can go ahead back into the CMD to see if Java has been installed or not. So we're going to say Java 
dash version. And what you'll see over here is it will tell you we have the OpenJDK version, and it will tell you it's the Zulu version of Java. Of Java. Now, of course, if you do have, if you download it from Oracle, it will tell you it's from Oracle. Uh, but this message right here indicates to us that Java has been successfully installed. Great. So now we can move over to R to start working on R Selenium and getting that set up. So uh, right here, there are three libraries that we're going to initially load. So first of all, we're going to load in the R Selenium package. Uh, next, we're going to also load in the um, WDMAN uh, library, which is uh, which stands for Web Driver Manager. And then last but not least, we will load in the netstat package. And I will talk about this a little bit shortly, but it has to do with the ports for R Selenium. So if you haven't installed any of these packages, you can install them using the packages navigator over here, click on install, type in each package's name and install them. So I'm going to highlight all these and run them. Okay, we've loaded them in. Now, one of the things that we need to do here is uh, we need to refer to the wdman package and we need to um, make sure that we, we load in Selenium. So the way to do that is we are going to type in the Selenium function which comes from the wdman package and I'm just going to run it just like this and what this is going to do is when we initially run this it's going to download all of those uh, web drivers for us that help us get access to Selenium. So I'm going to run this command and says that Java is not installed so what I'll have to do actually is I'll have to uh, actually reset our studio and then now we're going to reload these libraries and then I'm going to run Selenium and what it's doing over here as you can see it's downloading those drivers for us so it's downloading now it's downloading the Chrome driver versions and it's going to download a bunch of other uh, drivers as well so we'll just give this a few seconds for it to download okay so everything's been downloaded now to see where all of this is stored what we can do is actually we can create an object over here and we'll call this uh, we'll just call it selenium object and I'm gonna set it equals to the selenium function as well and uh, the only difference here is I will set the ret command equals to true and I also want to set the check argument to false just because I'm not interested in having uh, in, in R checking whether the drivers are installed or not um, I don't want it to go through that uh, and then the ret command will basically give us an output of where all of the drivers and all that stuff is stored so we're gonna run that and then if we look at the selenium object itself you're gonna see that we have a bunch of paths in here and I want you to focus on this part in here where this is where the Chrome driver is installed so in my case it's installed on the users my username app data local bin man and bin man Chrome driver um, so that's where we want to navigate to so in our path over here what we want to do is go into the, this PC we're gonna go into the C drive go into the users go into my username and then the app data by default is hidden in order to view it you need to actually uh, go to the uh, show over here in the view click on show and then you want to make sure that you check the hidden items because this is a hidden folder so you want to click on app data you want to click on local folder after that and then you're gonna notice that we have this folder in here called binman and this is where all of those drivers those web drivers are uh, currently sitting in so we're only concerned with the Chrome driver folder in this case uh, and then we want to click on win32 and right over here we have all of the um, latest Chrome drivers automatically installed by Selenium and what we want to do here is we want to make sure that we click on each of these folders and we have to delete the license.chrome driver now this is a critical part because uh, with the uh, latest updates in the chrome drivers they are now adding this license.chrome driver file which uh, is confusing it with the chrome driver.exe so you have to make sure that <coughs> you delete this file from here 
and then you want to delete it from here as well and delete it from here as well and then also anytime any new drivers are downloaded so let's say uh, version 112 comes out you want to make sure that you go to that uh, version and make sure to delete the license.chrome driver from there as well okay so once we have those deleted now that's the only thing that we need to worry about for now and now we can get started so let's say you want to run this through uh, Google Chrome the easiest way to do this it would be to create an object so in this case we'll call this remote driver and I'm gonna use the RS driver function and this comes from our selenium so first things first we need to set the browser so the browser is Chrome next we need to set the Chrome version so in this case if we go into our Chrome browser and we type in Chrome colon slash slash version we're gonna see that we have the 111 version of Chrome uh, so in order to know which Chrome version to use specifically you'll have to actually go in and type in the uh, binman list versions and type in Chrome driver now of course if you do need to install the binman package uh, go ahead and do that but we didn't have to load it in just because I'm using the double colons here so if I were to run that it's going to give me all of the versions available which by the way match what's in in here over here in the binman folder so it matches these exactly so typically speaking because all of these are 111 I just like to go off of the latest one available so I'm just gonna take that one and set it equals to the Chrome version and then there are a few other optional arguments that you can use so for the verbose you can set this equals to false and what this does is it suppresses any messages uh, that are generated while you're uh, initiating the Selenium server. And then last but not least, uh, for the port argument, um, you can keep this as it is by default, um, but one thing that I would like to use is the function called free port, which comes from the netstat package. And the netstat package just, what it does is it has this function called free port, which finds a free port available on your machine to run your Selenium server through. So after having all of these loaded in now let's go ahead and run this and see if it will work and there you go it's actually worked and we opened up a new uh, Chrome browser that was gener automatically generated and it says Chrome is being controlled by automated test software meaning that we have successfully connected to the Selenium server excellent now the way to close the selenium server it's very easy so let's say you want to finish with closing the selenium server you could just say close the server by just typing in the remote driver dollar sign and then you want to use the server side and then put another dollar sign and then say stop uh, now to close because with this object once we generate as a selenium object uh, it has two parts the client and the server the client is where you run most of the web automation and then the server is for some of those back end things like actually terminating the server so if I terminate it right here it will tell me that it's true so that means it's been terminated now if I try to run this again it's gonna tell me false because there is no server there is no selenium server being run at the moment okay so now let's go ahead and uh, show you how to run this through Firefox so I'm gonna again use the remote driver let me actually just copy paste this and the only things that you need to change in here is obviously the browser name we have to change that to Firefox and then for the Chrome ver a Chrome version argument you have to set this to null and this is to tell the RS driver function that we don't even want to look through the Chrome version uh, web drivers because we don't need that so once we run this it's going to load in a Firefox browser for us and you're going to see a robot icon in here and if we hover over it it should tell us that the browser is under remote control so we can close out of this and let's say you want to access this browser uh, and start doing the web automation all you need to do is create an object called remdr or you can call it whatever you want and then refer to the remote driver and we want to refer to the client side of that object and then to launch it we just type in remdr uh, slash open and then it's going to connect and then if we want to navigate to the page we can just type in remdr 
dollar sign navigate, and then we can pass in the URL that we want to visit. So in this case, let's say we just want to go into uh, maybe eBay.com. So let's just say www.ebay.com, run that. And if we go into our Firefox, we can see that it's actually loaded eBay for us. And then of course, if we want to close it, we can type in remdr. Uh, well, in this case, actually, we'll have to type in remote driver uh, server stop. Okay, and it stopped the, the Selenium server for us. So this is how you basically set it up and make sure that it works. Now, typically speaking, if you were to run this function again for the remote driver and version 112 has come out, What's going to happen here is that when you run this function, our Selenium, our Selenium is going to automatically look for those drivers and download them. So then once it downloads them, it's going to store them in this location right here. It will create a new folder. And what you want to do is you want to open that folder that's created and you want to make sure that the license file in there is removed. So you want to delete it just like how I showed in the video. So that's really how to set it up. I hope that helps clarify any sort of setup installation issues with Selenium. Um, if you do have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next tutorial.